guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. We're on to what I'm filming as one of the last declutters and will be the last declutter that's filmed overhead like this. So I'm not sure how things are gonna be uploaded when you're gonna see this. But today, I mean, we're going through basically everything else. So if you haven't seen my past declutters, I went through my palettes, all my eyeshadow palettes. Definitely check that one out. I thought, I mean, that's the one I would like the most. But I did that in two different parts. I did a blush and bronzer declutter. I've done a lip product declutter. And then I will have a special highlighter declutter, which I will be trying everything on. I'm putting that one off to last because it's the most work out of everything, but I think it will be good. I'm excited to actually try everything on anyway in that video. So here we are. This declutter consists of all of the face products. So like primers, foundations, sprays, powders. I have like extra little eye products. I have concealers. I have just like anything else I could go through. So this might be a long one. I just wanted to put it all in one because I, I just didn't want to split it all up, honestly. So I will give swatches where I feel like they're kind of necessary. I'm still gonna do that where I think it makes sense. I feel like with these sections of my makeup collection, I have some areas where I know I definitely wanna just pare down because I'm not using stuff. But then there are a lot of other sections that I might not use those all the time, but I do like having them for special occasions or whatever, and uh, we'll get to that as we go. So let's start, let's start. All right, so first section we're gonna start off with are my primers. I feel like, honestly, for me, this is a relatively small primer collection. I just love primers. I love that like moisturizing step right before foundation to get my skin ready. I do tend to have pretty problematic skin in that I think that my level of like what a good foundation looks like, the bar is a little lower than maybe other people because things just can look really patchy really fast and just weird on me. And so I like primers, like I love trying different ones. Anyway, that being said, uh, I definitely wanna keep this one from First Aid Beauty. I've talked about this a lot. It's the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I don't know if this is gonna matter as a swatch, but um, it does have a bit of like luminosity to it. It's not a ton, like it's very subtle. That's one I really like for every day. I like it on its own. I like it under like any foundation. It's kind of the one I always test first. So I'll be keeping that. And also don't mind my stained <laughs> fingers from my lip declutter, I know. So I will be keeping that. One, I'm finally, I'm gonna say goodbye is this Tatcha. I was so excited for this Tatcha silk canvas. I waited for a long time though and I got the mini. I've used up quite a bit, but I just don't love it. I really don't. It doesn't give me enough moisture that I want for my skin before going in with foundation. Wow, that was doing nothing. <laughs> That was doing nothing. Yeah, so I'm gonna let this one go. Another one I'm gonna let go is this Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. I used to really like this, but it's not really my style anymore when it comes to primers. I like something, again, more moisturizing and less like pore filling necessarily. Not that I would hate one in general, but it's just not, you know, it's just not my style as much anymore, so I don't reach for it and I'd rather get it out. Plus that one is getting a little old. This Tarte one I'm actually having in a project pan currently, so I am using it. It's very thin, it smells like coconut, which I love. It's almost like a serum, like the consistency of it, and I like it. It's pretty moisturizing. It can make me a little glowy, but I honestly don't mind that, so I'm keeping that. Hopefully I'll be able to use that up. I do have this other Tarte primer. This is the Rainforest of the Sea. It's a very moisturizing one. It's, oh, Quench, maybe that's what it's called. Anyway, this is kind of like a gel cream, because it's not completely gel. I don't know, I think I'm gonna also keep that. I It's very like moisturizing without being heavy and that's really nice since I do have oily skin um, and I don't find that it, it doesn't layer weird. Sometimes gel products can kind of start pilling depending on what you layer them with but I haven't found that to be the case with this so I think I'm gonna keep that around a little bit longer and I think I could use this. I mean I could if I really wanted to use probably a lot of this stuff up. This Becca one I'm so torn because obviously Becca's going out of business and so there's a part of me that wants to like keep this and finish it up. I've been using it on and off and it does feel, I mean this is pretty old. This is the backlight priming filter in case you were wondering but I'm like what if I just use this up? I'd feel so great because it is just a mini and this has like a bit of a tint and also some luminosity to it. You can see it there where it's not and where it is. I think because it's a mini I'm going to continue the kind of goal 
of using it up. I just know I'll feel so satisfied. I don't dislike this. I just definitely don't love it as much as the purple one from Becca. That one's so good. This one from One Size, it's the Secure the Blur. I did try this once. This was just sent to me very randomly, like to an old, old address. It's just not my style of a primer. Like it's just more smoothing and kind of mattifying. And so um, it's just not quite what I want. It still feels nice, but I do like something a little bit more, moisturizing personally. So I think this one I'm gonna pass on and it's relatively new as well. Two more touch and sole products. I'm gonna keep the glassy skin. This one makes me pretty like glowy, but I really like it. And you can tell I've used quite a bit of this. So I definitely just wanna use this one up. It's not like something I won't enjoy using, but I've gotten pretty far in it and I wanna keep using that. I like this actually, especially for winter time when you maybe want a little bit more glow, you might be dry. This one always comes through my foundation more than other like like glowy primers. This one on the other hand, oh, the Icy Sherbert primer, it is icy and look at the way this looks. It really looks like Sherbert y'all. Like it is such an interesting texture. I'm tempted to keep this, but I remember that it doesn't go on super moisturizing and then I get like extra oily from it. So I think I'm just gonna pass it on. I think it's easy to talk myself into keeping it, but realistically, I think it's not really working for me. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Three more primers left. This is the Say, uh, oh my gosh, what is this? Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. I actually kind of like this product. Um, I, I don't like love it. I wouldn't repurchase it, but it is nice and moisturizing and gives me the glow. So I just bought this, it's a newer product. So I'm gonna keep it around a little bit longer. I think it's nice. It smells very herbal. It's like a good mix of being glowy and moisturizing without feeling like oily or too pore filling. So I'm gonna keep that around. Plus I think this is just the mini. I got the small size. Two more primers. I'm keeping the Ofra. This is the Northern Lights primer. Let's see, I'm just putting this on top of what I have here. This is like a thinner one, but again, more moisturizing. And uh, I do like this one. I think I like it better than the Cool as a Cucumber. I know that's one of their primers as well. It feels nice, I like that. I'm keeping. And then this one from Good Molecules, it's not bad at all. I just, I never choose this over my other moisturizing primers. I've had this for a very long time. And so more just out of like being realistic of will I ever get to this? Um, I don't I don't think I will use this enough out of everything I already have So I might as well pass it on and not have it just sitting in there for no reason So I'm gonna pass that one on as well. I guess I'll try to do little numbers I ended up getting rid of in the primer category. I had 12 primers I'm decluttering five of them and I'm keeping seven. I feel like that's pretty good Especially because primer is one of my favorite things So I feel like this is manageable to potentially try stuff or if boxy charms, but also, you know, I can actually use some of this stuff. I thought I would just show you guys my powders really fast since I'm not gonna be getting rid of any of them. I only have three, two are loose and one is pressed. So this is the AOA Perfect Studio, I don't know, translucent powder. It's nice, I really love this. I've gone through multiple of these. I like this for lightly setting my face where I wanna kill a little bit of shine, but my skin's not gonna look powdery at all. And um, usually I have to like repowder with this more consistently to cut the shine, but I like the finish a lot. So that I'm definitely keeping. This is the Derma Blend loose powder. This one's a little bit more substantial and does keep me matte longer. So I like having both those as options. And then this is just the pressed powder that I have. It's just what I have. That's why I'm going to keep it. Um, it's the pure one, the balancing act. It's a little pink on me, even though technically it's like translucent, it's not. But I like using this for like quick touch-ups when I'm filming or different things. But on the everyday, I don't wear powder. Like I just don't, I don't powder my face. So that's why my powder collection is quite small and it will probably take me years to even go through this. <laughs> it, it would take a long time. But yeah, I'm gonna keep all of them. They all have a use right now and make sense for me. All right, here's like a, a mismatch of all my foundations at the moment. I have, let's count them up. I have 15 or 16. I've literally counted it a couple of times and every time I'm getting confused, but yeah. So we're in that ballpark. I'm gonna start by picking the foundations I know I do want to keep. That will be probably easiest. So I'm definitely keeping the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. And I thought that I would swatch them all just since I have them here because I think it's hilarious. All the shades look like and compared to each other, what I'm actually 
actually wearing. <laughs> so this is the shade 20 Fair from the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. I really enjoy it. It's one of my newer foundations and I think that it works quite well. I like the color on me too. So this is a keeper. Next, I love my Yensa foundation. This is the BC foundation. I wear the shade light neutral and this is my second one. So I've used quite a bit of it too. So this is probably my favorite still out of all my foundations. This is a lot more neutral and you'll see that in the swatch. I tend to go for a neutral um, if I can. Definitely, I don't like something pink though because pink will, uh, I don't know, it, it, if it's too pink, it'll start looking weird on me because I do tend to pull more warm. But sometimes the warm foundations are like too yellow. I'm like, okay, I'm not that yellow. So I have to be careful. And so, so I've noticed that sometimes my best option and stuff is the neutral shade. Definitely keeping this, I love this foundation. This is like my go-to, go-to. If I had to have one thing, this is what I pick. Next, this is a repurchase as well. This is the Revolution, uh, Makeup Revolution, let's see. <laughs> I don't have a name. Oh, Fast Base Stick Foundation. I have the shade F4. I also really love this. This is more for like, but look how pink that looks compared to everything. But this I really like. I think the color match is pretty good as well. It's almost kind of peachy. But anyway, I'm <laughs> keeping that. Look, this is what I'm talking about. I wear all three of these foundations. What the F? Like seriously? But I love that. I've, like I said, repurchased it. And I like this for... I mean, I can do light coverage or full coverage with it. It just depends. So um, yeah, keeping that. I'm definitely keeping my Milk Makeup uh, Stick Foundation. This I'm working on in a project pan. So um, I'm hoping to use it up actually. This is the shade Buff. And this actually, I like this shade match a lot as well. Um, I think it covers redness nice and it looks sometimes a little dark as I'm putting it on, but as it blends out, I find I don't look too stark. Like I don't feel like I need to bronze myself to bring me back to life. And sometimes if I go too light with the foundation, that's what I feel like I have to do. So this, I also like the color on me. This is where I'm like, when people just like know their shade and are so good, like I always <laughs> was like the scaredest of color matching absolutely anyone. I need to test it all. Okay, let's test it all guys. Let's put it all on your face and let's see where we go. I mean, this just confuses me. This confuses me. This next one, the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. I've used quite a bit of this. It is one I also still enjoy, so I'm gonna keep it too. It's like really liquidy. And this one's really peachy. <laughs> they call this, oh my gosh, what do they call this? Fair, 10 Fair Neutral. This is a fair shade and a neutral shade, and it's one of the orangest here. <laughs> what is going on? Someone tell me. Someone tell me. We're starting to get into the nitty little gritty. Oh, I'm definitely keeping the KVD one. Um, yeah, I just got this and I've been testing it out. I'm gonna do a video soon. So I have the shade Light 004 and it's one of my lighter foundations here. I was, it was really hard to pick a, a foundation. I actually like the way this looks. It's a little bit light, but I was scared of getting something too dark. So I'm pretty, again, I'm pretty happy with the shade match. I'm not sure if the next one up would have been better. So keeping that. And now we get into stuff I don't want to keep. So this is the Ultra HD Makeup Forever Foundation. I have it in 225Y. That's the color I used to be. But this is too dark for me. Like, I mean, if I got a tan, I think it'd be nice. I actually, I like the tone of that color, but something about it looks very, um, yeah, kind of yellow and almost olive. You can kind of see some of those greener undertones coming out. And it used to match and it just doesn't anymore. Plus this is so old, so that has to go. With that, I'm also gonna be getting rid of these Makeup Forever uh, cream foundations. Again, I think, yeah, Y225, uh, 225, which is the same as the foundation I just swatched, and also R230. So this is like a more pink toned one. This is a more yellow toned one. They both gotta go though. I mean, these, this is, these are supposed to be the same foundation color and they're not. So maybe this is just oxidized over time. That might be part of the problem. But yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these. I just haven't been using them. Again, they're getting kind of old since they were from my makeup kit and I just haven't reached for them. So I gotta get them out of my collection. Another one that has to go, I've been keeping it cause I like the formula, the Ulta um, Moisturizing Foundation Stick. I got the shade Light Neutral and I think they even had fair shades. So I thought that the light one would be good. Oh. Oh no, this is so pink. You guys, this foundation, it might not look it here and maybe on the inside of my arm, it's a match. On my face, it is like very pink. 
like it turns very pink. Um, so this I definitely need to let go of. I used it for a long time as like a lightening foundation and stuff or I'd mix it in with stuff. But the other day I was like, okay, let's try it out. And it's just too pink. It is really too pink. I think it's interesting because this shade from KBD matches more the pink tones, even though this is a warm toned color on their website. This is why it's confusing you guys <laughs> trying to find a foundation. They all are like light neutral, light neutral, neutral. And then what someone considers neutral is so different. Like I said, this is considered neutral. This is considered neutral. What? And this is considered neutral. This is neutral, has it in the name. This is neutral, has it in the name. This is neutral, literally has it in the name. We have, I feel like a more true neutral. We have a peachy, like warmer peachy type shade. And then we have something that's more cool toned. You guys, how are we supposed to figure it out? Okay, these are my two like lighter and darker foundations. I think I might still, I don't really love the Becca one. I don't know why this didn't work for me, but it's too light. Like it's too light of a foundation. And I didn't love, like for me, this was quite matte. I don't know. So I keep it cause it is nice to lighten stuff, but maybe I'll let that go. Then this is the darker Yensa. This is the shade medium warm. This they sent to me initially. That's why it's in different packaging cause it's older. And so sometimes I'll use this to like deepen up something if it is too light or whatever. Like if I'm in between shades as I got more tan or whatever. And I know I love the Yensa formula. So that's why I've been keeping it. I don't know. I really don't love the idea of keeping like things to lighten and darken though. I really, I don't know if I love that. I think I'm going to get rid of them. I think I'm going to get rid of the bulk. And um, you know, one of my goals this year is definitely to keep trying foundations a little bit more. I always get sucked into shadow. So I think I'm going to let these go. Yeah, that feels good. Um, okay. This Laura Mercier one, this is the tinted moisturizer. It's a little bit deep, but I think this might be a good one actually for summer for me. So this is more peachy like the Natasha Denona. It doesn't have as much coverage though. And I have the shade here, porcelain. <laughs> this is porcelain. This orange shade is porcelain. I, I mean, I get that every brand's different and so they all have their own color thing. It's just hard when you are switching between brands and all that. What is your best way to like shop online for foundations? Like what are your tips and tricks to help you decide if a foundation will be good for you based off just like swatches on another arm or whatever? Like do you have things that help you? Let us know in the comments. I think I am actually gonna keep this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use it more this summer for like quick, easy looks and um, um, yeah, keep that for now. And then I have these little samples, you guys. I feel so weird. I have so much foundation on my arm. This is the Born This Way from Too Faced. I'm just gonna put little dots on the side. This is the shade Snow. It's very warm. Um, I kind of want to keep this. I don't know. I, I don't know if I've tried this on yet. See how I like it. This is the Cover FX Luminous Tinted Moisturizer. And I think this is the shade Fair. Yeah, Fair Light. So that's it there. That's actually more like pink or neutral. I'd count it somewhere in there. And then last, this is the Smashbox Studio Skin in the shade 1.1. I think I tried this and it was too dark. Yeah. That one is too dark. It almost has like on my skin tone, obviously. It's, it's leaning more like tan and stuff. So I'm gonna definitely let go of that one. I think I'll give these two a bit more of a chance just to see, you know, see if they're a foundation I actually love. These are all supposed to match me <laughs> at some point or I had them in my collection like I could wear them all. And obviously it's just such a wide range. It's so interesting. But also I wanna point out it is kind of cool to know that like, even with some of these differences, I mean, I don't think my foundation looks bad when I wear different ones and I kept a lot of the different ones. So maybe don't stress out also too much. It's just funny. <laughs> it's just pretty funny. Especially if it's not full coverage. Full coverage can be tough. If you're going like full where no skin's being seen, you gotta be pretty careful with that shade match. All right, so with my foundations, I'm keeping, I believe nine. Yeah, nine different ones. Two of them being like samples, I'm still kind of trying out. As along with the Laura Mercier, I feel like that's still kind of on the chopping block, but I'd rather try it this summer, see if it works, then just get rid of it now. And then when it comes to what I'm getting rid of, this is five, six, seven foundations. Um, if we're counting these as separate, I feel really great about that. And specifically, I'm glad these aren't in there. I know that they're kind of like, were my lightening and deepening, but if I'm being realistic, I didn't use these that much in the first place. I'm usually at least close enough in what the color is for my skin that I can use, you know, bronzer or 
a lighter concealer to kind of help out in that situation. So I think that was a good decision overall. Happy with it. Also, if you have any, uh, you know, foundation recommendations, you kind of know what I like. I'd love to know, especially if they're drugstore too. I want to try some just drugstore foundations that are nice. You know what I mean? Like that aren't going to be like 40 bucks. That'd be cool. <laughs> All right, next we have setting sprays. I'm not sure I'm gonna do that amazing in this area, honestly, so, you know, warning. First, this is the Skin & Co Radiant Dew. I'm working on this in a project pan, so I will be keeping this. It's kind of minty, it's nice. It's kind of viscous is what I said, it's like, thicker and I like it for a refreshing kind of mist. It's more skincare, I feel like. It's kind of hard to decide what skincare, what's a makeup spray, you know, so some of these I think might be in the wrong category. And then I also have like actual skincare ones or ones that I consider more skincare than makeup that aren't even in here. So it's kind of a weird category, honestly. This is like a rose one. I think I'm just gonna move this into skincare instead of in my makeup drawer because I'm not really using it for makeup. It's just a rose mist and I got this from Yes Style, so I'm gonna move that to my skincare section. I'm keeping my Ofra makeup fixer. This is kind of the overall like setting spray that I have that's more like a workhorse. And if I'm wanting something that kind of like helps keep my makeup on all day, helps to um, like make my face look less powdery, I could just use this for everything. It's just like a solid product, so I'm keeping that. I just got this item one, and I'm like, maybe I could get rid of it. I think the packaging is cute, but it doesn't have like a fun scent. I don't particularly particularly love it the times I have used it already. So I have so much spray here. I think this is one I'm gonna pass on. This Scandinavia is old. I had it in my kit. I moved it to my stuff, still haven't been using it. It's oil controlling and again, I kind of use the Ofra one for that if I'm going for that, but I also love a dewy one, something that's more just refreshing and I'm not looking necessarily for oil control when it comes to my sprays, so that has to go. This is one of my all time favorite ones. I love the smell of this. I call it Medical Coconut from Too Faced. It's a Hangover RX. Um, it's so expensive, but I'm gonna keep this and finish it up. It's almost done, but that one I could see myself at some point even repurchasing, like I love that. I have this mini makeup fixer from Ofra. I think I'll pass, it's not opened yet. So um, since I have this one, I think I'll pass on the travel one for now, you know, like the smaller size and just keep the big one. And then I have two here. I love Mac Fix Plus. It's one of my favorites in, I love the smell. Like there's something nostalgic about it, the bottle. I don't know, keeping that. The sprayer is kind of weird, but <laughs> I'm keeping it. And then this is something that's not open from In Beauty Project. I did like the dual phase setting mist from them. Um, it is a little bit more of a dewy one. I remember the sprayer being weird on my first one though. So I'm actually thinking I'm just gonna pass this on even though I enjoyed it. I just don't wanna deal with like a bad sprayer again in case that happens with this. So I might as well see if someone else <laughs> likes it. Like, I don't know, uh, I hope they don't get a bad sprayer, I guess, but yeah, I think I'm gonna actually pass it on. I wasn't expecting to do that, but I think that makes the most sense for me. Wow, I did way better than I thought. I got rid of four and I'm keeping, well, four in my like more makeup category, but then this is moving to skincare. That makes me feel really good because really the only three, like this I don't even think of as makeup. So these are like the three that I have and two I'm in love with. And then one is just like such a like, yeah, workhorse. So that feels great. All right, let's zoom in. Oh my gosh, you guys are so far away. So we have concealers here, and um, this is actually more like a highlighting product, but concealers, correctors, this is what I have. I don't feel like I have too big of a collection, but I know what I wanna keep so far. So I definitely am keeping my Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is the shade 11. I love this. This is the second one I've gone through, or I'm on my second one, so that I'm keeping. I'm definitely keeping my corrector from Becca. I don't have a ton left, but this will last me probably at least till the end of the year, if not later. So definitely keeping that. I love this product. This I'm working on in a project pan. It's the Touche Clot High Cover Radiant Concealer. I don't know, I guess, if you want swatches of this stuff too. I find that this is a little bit, it can be a little bit light for me, but I've also been a little bit lighter as of recently. This, I'm just working on, it's old. <laughs> it's pretty old, but I'm gonna try to finish it. Let me swatch the Glossier for you. The Glossier, I feel like, looks really great. I don't love too brightening of a concealer anymore, so this, I find, is a really nice one where it doesn't brighten, but it's not too dark either. It's a nice middle ground. And since it's kind of sheer, I think that helps. Next, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer, this thing. All the reviews are like, the packaging sucks, and they are not wrong. 
They are not wrong. Like it's hard to get it off. The concealer itself is like not meant to be. It's too thick. What were they thinking? Um, I also got a shade that's a little bit too dark, but I'm gonna keep this around for summer, try to use it up. I got it during Black Friday. I should have got the lighter one, but I didn't. I'm gonna see if that works more in the summer and then we'll go from there. This is the item, another item product. I picked this out. This is too light for me though. Oh my gosh. This is the Air Hug Concealer. It's just very light and it's like pretty full coverage. So it's just too much for me to handle. So I'm gonna get rid of that. This Oma Beauty, oh, I actually don't mind the texture and like all, all the things, but again, this is too dark. It's just too dark for me. So I have to pass that one on. I've like barely used it. I have this Kosa one, look. In the packaging, it almost looks like this one, well, to me anyway, maybe it doesn't. This one might be lighter, but oh my gosh, I got totally the wrong shade. 3.2 is very olive and tan. Guys, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna pass this. I think my mom might be able to use this though. So I'm gonna give that to her. This actually works for me. <laughs> I thought this was too light at first, but it actually works. This is the Hydro Sealer from Tarte, and I have the shade 14N Fair Light. Um, so let's see this swatched in comparison. Yeah, so see how it's not quite as light as this one? It's peachy, but that still isn't too pink. It's kind of like, peach can be weird. It can pull kind of pink, but also kind of warm. Like, you know, it's peach. So this I'm gonna be keeping. One of the only ones that, you know, works nicely for me. I'm not in love with it, but you know, it's something. I don't feel like I'm in love with anything except I do really like the Glossier. That's the only one so far that I'm like, yay. Okay, this is from Ofra. I haven't even used this exact one yet. This is the Skin Sculpting Wand in Dawn. I'm assuming this is like more of a highlighter color. It kind of matches the Tarte one. Maybe I'll give this a go and just see how it looks under the eyes or if this is more for just like highlighting like on top of concealer type thing, you know? I'm gonna give it a go since I haven't tried it and, and see how it is. And so, yeah. Look at, once again, all the different shades of concealer. All right, so I'm getting rid of three concealers and it's sad because I wish all these ones worked out for me. Like I, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this again. I just haven't done it yet. And I'm keeping six, well, technically five concealers and a corrector, but yeah, and this might, I don't even know. Yeah, this I'm hopefully gonna use up. This is like, uh, this is okay. <laughs> this I need to try. So I feel like this is a little dire. You know, if you're wondering why you don't get concealer recommendations from me all, <laughs> this is what's going on over here. So if you have concealer recommendations, once again, especially if they're drugstore and have a good range, like that's important to me. So um, yeah, let me know, let me know. I think next we'll do like mascaras and then liners. I'm gonna try to whip through these ones pretty fast. Oh, this is nice. Not, that's not in the right section. Yeah, I'm gonna work through these hopefully fast. I need to just get rid of so many of these <laughs> mascaras because honestly, yeah, we need to not have stuff expired. Like that's not okay. This is the one I'm like kind of currently using. It's from Essence, it's the Lash Princess. It technically is the Snow White one, but I think it's all the same. I guess I can show you the wands. So that's what the wand looks like. And I like it. It's a little bit clumpy on my bottom lashes, but overall it builds up length and volume pretty fast. So I can see why everyone really likes it, especially for it being a more affordable mascara. This Ofer one is also a relatively new one, so I'm going to be keeping that. This one is like a more plastic bristle wand. And yeah, it definitely gives some volume and you can like brush out with those plastic bristles. This is too old at this point, but I did enjoy this mascara. This is like my favorite type of wand where they're kind of like chaotic looking. I feel like it helps like get product on my lashes in a way where they look fluffy still and um, still volumized, but actually have length as well. So I did like this, this is the uncensored one, but I'm gonna get rid of it. This is the Ico Rock Out Lash Mascara. I don't know if I've really tried that. Oh, I'm just gonna get rid of that. This is what the wand looks like, y'all. It's just not really my thing. This Oma Beauty one, Drama Bomb. Oh, I don't know, actually, I thought I didn't, but look at that wand. See, it's like more chaotic. It's a little like hourglass shaped, which I don't mind. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that one more try. Let's try that again. Urban Decay Freak is going, even though the last time I used it, it wasn't too bad. It's just too old you know, realistically. Um, and this wand is a mess. Like this, I don't know why. I think that this wand can be a metaphor for people's lives, just like effed up and like <laughs> maybe my own life sometimes, you know, just think of this wand when I'm feeling down, like, yep, that's how I feel. 
Um, okay, getting rid of that. I think this Tarte one's too old, but I did enjoy using it. It's like a nice thin wand. I liked it, it was good. It's a solid mascara. It's a pretty cult classic product, but that's also too old. Honestly though, I don't love this packaging. I feel like I have like a single plastic packaged up hot dog mascara or something, you know, like it's in its plastic. I just, mm, not my not my favorite. And then this Pat McGrath Dark Star, this is also just too old. Um, I thought this was okay. Like it's not bad, but I, I mean, it's hard not to think of the money aspect of Pat McGrath stuff. And for the money, I wouldn't purchase it, you know? Like solid, it's fine. If you love Pat McGrath or you, you know, that's like the brand, your brand, I get it. I have my brands too. Or if this money is the same as buying something from the drugstore anyway, you know. Do your thing. Okay, so getting rid of so many, I'm only keeping three. I mean, it's like, I don't need a horde of open mascaras. <laughs> Hello. They go bad, they go bad. Liners, liners, liners. I have so many liners, you guys, because I love a, a nice colorful liner on the lower lash line. Tight lining is something I used to do. Water line, sometimes I'll do if it actually works on that. So I doubt I'm gonna get rid of that much here, but I will swatch some things out for you. So I have like the Raw Beauty Christie and ColourPop liners. I hope they don't break. <laughs> Cause when I first got them, I was trying to swatch them uh, on camera and they just kept <laughs> breaking. I think that's like a thing with ColourPop or like the angle depending. I think that the ColourPop liners are nice for the price, you know, and they they do often have like fun colors, which I think isn't always happening, you know? So yeah, they're pigmented and nice. I'm keeping those. I have the Glossier ones and I like them for the lower lash line, but I don't like them in the water. Like they don't really work on the water line, but they had such unique colors. I think these are actually discontinued. Um, the whole play line, I think <laughs> stopped being a thing. So where's the other one? Oh yeah, I have another kind of mustard. Let's see. It's technically different. I know it doesn't look it, but it is. This has more green in it. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep those. I just don't love them for the inner waterline. I have some Nika K ones, and I know these are getting old, but I think I'm gonna keep them. I smelled them. Just I smelt this one. Um, they're just so fun. They're so fun and they're so cheap. They're a dollar. My number one recommendation, guys, is Inchworm. Inchworm is so awesome. This is definitely the one I've gotten the most like the colorful liner that I've gotten the most use from. You can use this to like put on your inner corner then put shadow on top of it. I like using this on the waterline. I like using this, yeah, mostly on the waterline, I guess. So cool, so pretty, so affordable too. This is just like a purple one from Makeup Forever. I mean, it's just so unique. All these are just like, I don't mind having some different colors in here for the times I want to do something kind of fun or different. This one's the shade French Garden Gel Liner with Diamond. What is this? Number seven Jardin. It's kind of like a brown with some sparkle in it. I'm not sure if I'd use that, honestly. Well, I'm gonna see what else I have, but I'm not sure. This is pretty old. Let me smell it. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. It's like a fun copper. I just like collect all the different colors. I love it so much. I have a gold one. This one's from Milani. That one's more like sparkly, which is kind of fun. I tend to like a cream liner, I'm not gonna lie, over something shimmery um, just because I tend to use these for definition and sometimes something sparkly just like reflects light in a different way. But this one from Pixie's so nice. This is the shade Rose Glow and I, I really like that one for something kind of understated and shiny. Another one, Mulberry from Pixie is really nice. Love that. It's like neutral but purple also. Another purple one I use a lot is from Lise Watier, but this one's like a nice violet. Ooh. That one's so pretty. And when you blend it out, it turns more and more like purple. I have this navy one from Wander Beauty. That's really nice. I love using this navy for like duochrome shadows because it will like turn it a different color depending on the duochrome. It's cool. I have a white. I'll keep the white. <laughs> this is... This one's from CoverGirl. It's actually not that good. Maybe I'll get rid of that. It's not impressing me. I'm gonna let that one go. I have a black also from CoverGirl. I don't really have a ton of black liners, so let's see. I have one black here. I also have this Lee Swatchy. This Lee Swatchy one's getting a little bit old. It's a little bit softer of a black, and honestly, I kind of like that more. Mm. And I do tend to like, again, a pencil liner. Like, I don't know why everyone's so against just a wood sharpened liner. So I think I might... 
I'm gonna keep this one and get rid of the CoverGirl one again. I'm definitely keeping this Tarte more uh, like cream liner. That one's nice for just something subtle but more awake in the waterline. I have two grays. One is from, oh my gosh, that is gray. This one's from Maybelline. And then I also have, again, another one from Lee Swatier. This one's more blue and that one's more almost like a black. Like this looks almost black. Maybe I'll keep, I'll, I'm gonna keep both, whatever. This brown Jardin, I think, no, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of that. I got rid of three, that was something. I knew it wasn't gonna get rid of a ton. I don't, I mean, I don't have a ton of like the same color, y'all. <laughs> They're all different except for a few neutrals. And this is part of the reason I didn't split all this up into different videos because honestly, you know, it'd be kind of boring. Okay, let's do brows. I have some like unopened brow products in here. I'm gonna move that into the unopened section of this type of stuff that I have, which includes a lot of different products and we'll go through that separately. Okay, I don't know how much we're gonna really clean out, but we'll see. I love this cover girl. It's almost done. I'm gonna need a new one very soon. This is the Easy Breezy Brow. I get the shade Light. Highly suggest, I've used like two of these up. Love it. Got it in PR, repurchased it, would purchase again. This I've been using from Wander Beauty because I have it and I do really like it, especially for this being the only thing I use. It's kind of weird to swatch brow products, but it doesn't give me a ton of like hold or fibers, but if I'm just putting it in only my brows, no pencils, working it into the tail and then having less in the front of the brow, I can get a really fast, really easy everyday brow when I don't know, I've like really been enjoying that. So def keeping that. I didn't love the uh, Wet n Wild brow products like this. So these are gonna go, the colors were just off. Like the blonde shade is too warm. It's too warm. It was looking almost red on me. So I'm letting those go and they have like no hold. They just feel like tinted conditioner or something. I don't know. I did not like the feeling of those. I feel like I'm missing a few brow products that I'm working on in a project pan, but I am gonna keep this CoverGirl one in the shade. I think it's like soft brown. It's a little dark, I know, but I like this in the tail. I can make a lot of stuff work, honestly. I'm almost done with this e.l.f. brow pencil. This is the taupe one. This is like my all time favorite for the price and everything, just easy. So that I'm keeping, like literally that's what I have left. So it's almost done. Oh, I have another cover girl. This is Honey Brown. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna keep this because I think Honey Brown pulls too warm or too red. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let that one go. That was in my kit. And I think that they had sent me quite a few brow products. These are just caps because I never keep the caps on my brow pencils because I find it tedious every day to take them off. So then I just end up leaving them off and just um, rolling them down. That's, a, <laughs> that's what ends up happening. This is from Ofra. It's like the universal brow pencil. They just have like the one, it's just like a sharpenable one. I'm kind of tempted to keep it because I, you know, just to have something from Ofra for brows in case I want it. Let's see what we have here though. This is the, I don't know if it's billion dollar, I don't know what this is, like a universal pencil. It's like a very similar color. It's a very thick pencil. I think, I guess I'll keep the Ofra since they are like almost the same color to me. I think this one was also universal. So I guess I will get rid of that, keep the Ofra. And then I do have these two pens. These are just from Rimmel, like whenever I wanna draw brow hairs on. I have not gotten the hang of like how to do this. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna get rid of them. I don't, I mean, I don't need that. And then I do have two of the pomades. I have the shade taupe. Uh, look at that, not even used. I had these in my kit, but I'd never used them because I never really did too much editorial or like super glam. It was always really natural, but I wanted to have them just in case. So they're just like unopened. <laughs> Freaking pomades. Um, I think that I'm gonna get rid of Ash Brown and just keep taupe in case I ever wanna like dabble in trying this, why not? Yeah, I already have it. I already bought it, I already had the money, so just keep that. But I think I, I don't need two shades, my God. So I'm gonna pass on Ash Brown. And that one's unopened, someone can have a good old time, $20 brow product free of charge to them. Oh, I think it's a good time to mention this is my Brow Pro palette. I also had this in my kit for, you know, obviously, other people who have brows. I'm gonna keep this. Like, you know, obviously I'm not doing makeup anymore like that, but this was expensive and I don't mind, again, having this just in my collection. So keeping that. And also it's like, if I ever did someone's wedding at some point or whatever, you know, I could be like, bring all your stuff. And then I have a few things like this or the lip palette or whatever to potentially do 
some things. So I'm talking about like family, friends type stuff there. Okay, anyway, that's brow products. Um, not a big deal, kind of boring. Sorry if it was. Oh, I didn't even mention the Patrick Ta. Oh my gosh, it looks so gross right now. I'm gonna keep this for now. Um, you have to like spray in there, it's like a wax. I need to tint my brows. That's something I think I wanna do. Yeah, and then I think this would work better. Brow waxes don't really work when you have to put product, like if your brows aren't naturally already dark. It strips the, uh, it's just more complicated when your brows are blonde and you don't want them to look blonde. You want them to have more depth to them. So then you add product, but then you use this to like keep them up. It's just weird. Okay. Anyway, let's bring on the random eye products. So much stuff here. I'm gonna do this very random and quite fast because I think that will be the best situation for everything and everyone. I don't even know how well I'm gonna do, honestly. I have quite a few of these like Slay Fire glitters. They are biodegradable. I think I saw something saying though that some of them actually aren't, I don't really know. Um, anyway. I, I still, in general, I'm not like buying glitter as much. Like I just stick to more flaky formulas that give the effect of glitter without using real glitter. I'm gonna keep these, I have them, but uh, yeah, just kind of some thoughts on glitter. You guys know me, I always give my thoughts on gosh darn glitter. I also have this Danessa Myricks. I did not know this actually had real glitter in it, but I don't wanna like just get rid of it. I just feel so conflicted, honestly. <laughs> So I feel. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep this for now. I don't know, yeah. These, the Twin Flames from Danessa Myricks, I don't love these as like, you put them on your eye and that's the only thing. I wanna keep playing around though, but I wouldn't buy them. Like knowing what I know now having them, I wouldn't buy them again. So I don't suggest them, but I do, I mean, again, already have them. So I wanna see if there's a way I can make them work. These don't have real glitter in them though. So that's good. This one's really pretty. It's just hard to work with to me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> I'm not gonna give up. These I know I can get rid of, I think. The Kaja Moon Crystal Shadows, they're liquids. I think some of mine have just dried up. I just haven't been using them enough. I don't know. They're just not like that amazing. They're fine. If you love them, that's cool but some of them are a little more chunky. I don't know, I don't know. I, I just haven't, and I don't really have a desire to, so these I'm gonna get rid of. I have four different shades. I have a few of these pigments from Ritual Defeat. Not my favorite, but I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not ready to like get rid of them. I'm still in denial about wanting them to be good. Kind of like the Danessa Myricks, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, they're just like a thicker formula than I expected. They're almost like a Rowan. Oh my God, they kind of are like a Rowan shadow, but in a loose pigment form. Maybe if I think of them that way, I can I can work with them better. Yeah, I do actually really love the shade Tellurium. These two, I could live without. This one's so pretty. It's like neutral, but still kind of fun. Anyway, I really wish that I could have the other ones from the line that are like the moon crystal. I don't know, they're like sold out a million years ago, but I still dream about them. Uh, and that's why I purchased these. I was hoping they'd be like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> In case you were confused as to where I was going, I'm still keeping them. I have a few like single shadows I got from Yes Style from different brands that are actually, I mean, I think are nice. They are like shimmery, great, like one shadow looks. This is the shade. It just says number 10 on here. It's from Misha. So I think I might keep that one. I have these ones. These are from Romand, I think. Yeah, this one's the shade 03. Again, like super easy and sparkle. I think if you aren't someone who wants super texture, doesn't want like too much, but still wants some shine and sparkle, you'd like these. This one's number four. Again, really pretty for like an everyday just wash of something. So I'm gonna keep those for now. If you want major sparkle, I'd say go with Cleona, go with the Shine by SD Reserve collection. Like those are better for like real sparkle. But if you want something that's more everyday sparkle, these are good. I have some cream shadows here. These are from W7, the Disco Diamonds. I don't think you can get these anymore. Like they tend to do stuff like that doesn't come back, but they are so, these Disco Diamonds were so pretty. This is the shade, The Hustle, and then this one is Studio 54. I honestly think both these are still so pretty, and I think I'm gonna keep both still. 
Like I still think they're nice. I don't notice like any texture changes or anything. So I'm gonna keep both of those. I'm telling you in person, they are so, they like, if someone put these in a high-end thing, I'd be like, oh yeah, I would not know. This is from Lorac. This is the shade Cashmere. It's kind of this like, I don't know, gray green shadow. I think I'm gonna keep that too. I thought I might get rid of it right now, but swatching it, it's so pretty. So keeping that, I mean, you know, when it comes to sparkles, you guys know I don't have problems having a lot of different ones. So if I think I can use it or it inspires me, I'm still gonna keep it. I have some Laura Mercier caviar sticks. I don't, these are so hard for me to use like consistently, but every time I swatch them, I'm like, I want to keep using them. <laughs> I wanna use those. So they're still creamy. They're still working. Like I'm keeping them. These I don't use as much. The Touch and Soul, I'm not sure if I need these. So these are like those liquid shadows. I love this fun green color though. And even this blush is so nice and so pretty as like a wash of color on the lids. I'm just like, do I just use powder to do this? You know? They're so cute though, they're so cute. I'm doing horrible, I'm literally doing so horrible. This is the Fluid Eye Matte from About Face. I got this in an Ipsy. I mean, that is so pretty. I don't know if I'm gonna use that though. I think I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna keep the ones that I bought and like and have had forever and get rid of this one. I have this cover effects. Let's see what this swatch is out like. I mean, that's pretty, but I'll probably use a powder shot. I'm gonna get rid of that. Ooh, I did it, I did it, I did it, okay. This, I just wanna test out more. It's the uh, Ico Galactic Liquid Lid Gloss. It's so, Interesting. I think the color is really pretty. Um, let me swatch it out like this so you can see. But it has like tons of sparkle in it. It almost, yeah, looks wet, but it dries down. So I think that's kind of fun. I'm gonna keep that. And it's so tiny. I love that. I think it's time for this Urban Decay shadow to go, the Moon Dust. I keep keeping it, but it's pretty sheer and I, it just has so much hard pan and is so old and I have other stuff. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just keeping it for nostalgia. And they repackaged if I really wanted to. Um, this is old enough that I should probably just replace anyway. So that's gonna go. I know, I know it's a good one, but it's gotta go, it's too old. I have some of these, well, I have some. I have all of these shadows from Holika Holika. These are specifically the flesh. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but there's like moon flesh, champagne flesh, uh, rose flesh. So I love these. I've told all of you guys about these. They are very sparkly, very like, chunky, they're like what I love. And so I highly suggest them if you wanna check them out. They almost feel like kind of wet. This moon flush is probably my favorite. It's so pretty for like a cool tone shadow. Let me do rose flush. Oh, they are so sparkly. I'm telling you guys, seriously. You guys know I know my sparkle. So if you're on there looking for something from Yes Style, these are some of the shadows that I feel like you're gonna get like indie sparkle quality from. Like they're amazing. And not all of them are created like this from Holika Holika. Specifically, it's a bundle, like there's four of these shades in the listing. They're so pretty. You guys have heard me talk about these. Keeping those, obviously. This section, I really didn't declutter much. All right, it's getting kind of dirty. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's finish this up. I have some of the Metalist shadows. These are from Touch and Soul and I also really love these. Hollow Mulberry is probably my fave. Again, if you love like sparkle and texture, you will love these. In the boxy pop-up, they had them for five bucks a piece. So I picked up quite a few colors and I picked up some to replace the ones I took the stopper out of, like just that little clear thing. And then they got kind of crumbled. I mean, it make, they're not like unusable and I've like packed them back in, but they always crumble back out. This is Sun Aurora, so pretty. These are like the closest thing that I found to Cleona shadows that are like from regular brands. And then this one is so pretty as well. This one's more neutral and like an apricot type shade. So yeah, keeping those. I have some loose pigments. This one is just from Sugar Pill. It's the Lumi pigment. You know, not super crazy amazing now with what I have and what I prefer, but I'm still not willing to just get rid of it to do it. Like it's still really pretty as like an inner corner highlight or a brow bone for something kind of iridescent and subtle. So I'm just gonna keep it for now. Maybe I'll come back around to loving it or something. I don't know. It's not like bad. It's just, you know, it doesn't compare to sparkles like this when that's next to it, but that doesn't mean it's bad. I have this Rowan single shadow. This is the shade Summer Disco. I bought this because I loved the quad, but I don't get the same like 
pickup of product on this is like definitely disappointing. It's not like to me, this is not the same as the shadows that I got in the quad. So um, I'm actually gonna get rid of that. Disappointing, but I like the quad. I don't know what happened there. I have this just like big black eyeshadow from Natasha Denona. I mean, we all have a million black eyeshadows, but I kind of do like that I could have it just in a single form. So I just keep that around in case I and go, I'm going somewhere and the palette doesn't have a black, but I want it. Or like, even if I wanted to do anything with a lot of black, like, I don't know, I'm keeping that. I don't see a reason. It's not like I have like seven black single shadow eyeshadows. This blue from Illamasqua, Anya, it's still just the prettiest. This might be something I can depot. Should I try to depot this? I know if this were in my singles, I would be putting it in everything. It's so pigmented, so buttery. I'm gonna depot that, holy crap. Okay, we'll try. It's in plastic, we'll see. Last, you guys, three more little tiny loose pigments. I have some Terra Moons ones. These are really pretty. Like, this is so pretty. This to me is way prettier than even Lumi and how sparkly it is. It's like a lighter texture, a finer like shimmer, but so much more multi-dimensional. So definitely keeping this. I'm not sure if these are available anymore because I got some of these on the last like, like they're moving out type of sale. This is Firefly though. And then I also have Glass Slipper, which is more textured, um, like bigger particles and just stunning. This like gives you almost like a wet look, like so cool. So yeah, keeping those. And last, these are flakies and I just haven't like, I mean, they're multi-chrome flakies. Of course I'm keeping them. I just need to figure out like how, what's the best way to use flakies? Like how do you use flakies? How should I use flakies? I don't know. I think they're so cool and they look amazing in photos and I love staring at them, but to use them, that's been more difficult in practice. So let me know your tips on using flakies. Bad declutter, I really just showed you stuff. And if you thought that was it, you were wrong. Look at this, I got even more stuff. This is the last section though, you guys, I promise, I promise. I don't know how much is actually gonna go in here, so we'll see. I have like more tools up in this corner. I don't know if you can see, I have duo lash glue. I have another, I think this is just lash glue as well. It's brush on though. I might just keep the brush on. Oh my gosh, this is, oh, okay, this has to go. This is bad, obviously. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so bad. Ugh. Duo always smells so gross. This reminds me of makeup school. Ugh. Okay, disgusting. I'm gonna keep my glitter glue from Lit and I'm gonna keep the other lash glue that I have. Not sure if that's even good, but I never use lashes, so that'll be what I have when I do. I'm keeping all of these pastel, like activated, water activated liners. These are really cool. Don't use them all the time, but man, are they inspiring and pretty. So keeping. <laughs> I have all these eye primers. Honestly, I'm trying to use up this MAC one. I need to replace this glitter glue probably, but until I do, I want to have a glitter glue on hand. I should just go do that right after this because I've literally had this for like five years. It's probably not good to be putting on my eyes. I have this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion. I want to keep that. It's like such a solid one. I'm testing out this Sigma base. So I'm gonna keep that for now and just keep trying it. I have an Ofra base that I like to have for when I'm doing stuff with them. And then I have this Kaleidos tone activated one. I guess I don't love this. I guess I could probably get rid of this one. It's pretty peachy. It's not bad. I don't know. I kind of want to try it again though. Okay, I'm gonna keep that too. I know, not very good, but that's the truth. Over here, these are a bunch of gel liners from Ofra. I have tons of different colors and I'm not gonna get rid of those either. Even if I don't use them very often, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like there's no reason just to do it to do it. So I let those sit there. I have a lot of pen eyeliners that I guess I don't need. This KVD one, I think I'm gonna let go even though I love the color, it's kinda, it's not that amazing and I don't love inkwell liners, so that I can get rid of. I have two Ofra ones. Let's see which one is fresh. Ooh, I think this one, this one looks a little bit blacker. So I'll get rid of the other one. I don't need two hanging around. I have this unopened Hank and Henry. I'm gonna pass that on. I have this milk makeup stamp. I'm gonna keep that. I'm like gonna always keep that. It's a little heart. Isn't that cute? This is from Wander Beauty. I mean, I don't really see the need of keeping more than one liquid liner when I don't use them. So 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm just keeping the two, really. And then these are all unopened products in the center here. So I have some mascaras. I'm gonna keep those, one's from Pacifica, one's from Rimmel. This is the Kevin Aquan, the Expert Mascara. I have an Urban Decay Perversion, definitely. This is like the one I wanna try next. I have so many eyeshadow primers. I'm gonna get rid of them. Alter Ego, I, they send me a primer every time they send me something, so I know I have a multiple of those. It Cosmetics Superhero, I wanna try that. I'm gonna try that. This is my favorite mascara from CoverGirl. I haven't opened that, so I'm gonna keep it. Oh, I have two, nice. I have a Tarte one to try. This is the DHC Super Long Mascara. I'm gonna look at what this wand looks like. I think I, I don't know what I got this in. Mm, it's kind of a weird brush, but I kinda wanna try it. I'm gonna try it. And I have this Marc Jacobs Black Highliner. I think I'm just gonna pass that on. I'm gonna, I, you know, I don't really use black usually. I also have this Easy Breezy Brow Clear Mascara. I have a couple different clear mascaras, but I wanna try and see which one I like the best and then I'll keep that one. So yeah, I really cleaned out this section. There's, <laughs> there's nothing left. What better organization? I like that so much more. So um, yeah, that's good. It feels good to get cleaned out. And I'm leaving the video here. If you guys made it this long, I appreciate you. I know this one was kind of, this is just voyeuristic probably, <laughs> where you're just looking at what I have. I did get a lot of stuff. I'll show you what I did to clutter. I ended up getting like two bins, like, you know, bins full of stuff. So it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It just isn't as satisfying as I feel like some of the other ones because it's all the little dinky stuff. So, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I'm not sure I'm uploading this so if this is the last one thanks for watching the series if it's not I think the highlighter video might still be coming so look out for that but yeah thank you guys so much for being here I appreciate you so much and I will see you in the next one bye guys